if you buy a car, you are expected to pay the monthly payments. If you buy a home, you are expected to pay the mortgage every month. If you do not pay your car payment, if you do not pay your mortgage payment, then your credit is going to be bad. It's going to hurt your credit. So let's look at Congress for a second. This is spending that they've already done. That was White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre yesterday uh, treating the audience like morons yesterday, comparing car loan payments to the debt ceiling battle. Her analogy raising the question, what about student loans the administration is trying to forgive or the evictions that they're trying to ban for people who signed a lease? Uh, Joe, uh, you could say all of that, that you have to pay your bills, but at some point when you overspend, you got to stop spending. Maria, it is fascinating to watch Karine Jean-Pierre on a daily basis do these daily press briefings. She was horrible from day one when she took over a year ago for Jen Psaki, and somehow now she is regressing. She's somehow getting worse at her job. And instead of showing some improvement, as you said, she speaks to reporters the way I speak to my first grader about the grown-up stuff. Yes, if you take out a loan, if you're, if you're a student, then you have to pay it back. If I buy a car, I have to pay back that car loan. So then when it comes to the debt ceiling, what is she talking about exactly when she says that we have to pay back our loans when we're $32 trillion in debt at this point? So I, I don't even know what to say. This is the most inept press secretary we have seen in our lifetime. And the analogy she used here, she perfectly stepped on the reason why student loans should be paid back instead of forgiven, yeah. as this administration wants to do. Well, look, she's getting her directive for President Biden, John, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know, she really doesn't have an understanding of these issues, I guess. Yeah, what she's saying is that if you're in debt and you're having problems uh, repaying uh, your uh, credit, then what you should do is take on more debt. And that is exactly yeah. what Biden is proposing. I think I want to make one important point, and that is right now, we have the Fed doing everything it can possibly do to bring down price inflation. We're looking at the deepest uh, contraction of the money supply on record. But what does uh, Biden do with fiscal policy? He continues to expand government spending, government debt, at a rate that may uh, make uh, rapid inflation last longer than currently no. expected. This is uh, dangerous. They're working at, uh, at opposite goals. Well, it's dangerous, Joe, because they won't acknowledge the problem. I mean, the first issue in terms of fixing something is acknowledging there's a problem and there's a spending problem. That's why we had 40-year high inflation. Now you've got the Federal Reserve blaming everybody except their inept uh, performance over the last 15 years. The Fed released its financial stability report yesterday and had real serious red flags about credit tightening and financial stress. This is all combined, and the reason we'll see a recession later this year. Precisely. And, and look, when... I'll speak in Kareem Jean-Pierre speak right now, all right, very slowly. When you spend more money, it devalues the dollar. When you print more dollars, it devalues it. Therefore, you get more inflation. And that's why we still don't have wages keeping up with inflation. Inflation, Maria, is three times higher still than it was when Donald Trump left office. And that is self-inflicted at this point. Well, we are watching this for sure, and we've got the details later on on that meeting. We'll take a break. When we come back, we're looking at China. It is now worried about being spied on after the spy balloon flew over the United States for a week, how the U.S. needs to respond, and why we haven't seen any response. Mama, growing up, you were so good to me. You worked hard to save for my future. So now, I want to thank you. I started investing with Vanguard to help take care of you, like you took care of me. Te quiero, Mama. Only at Vanguard, you're more than just an investor. You're an owner, helping you take care of the ones you love. That's the value of ownership. What if my type 2 diabetes takes over? What if all I do isn't enough? 
Or what if I can do diabetes differently? Now you can with Once Weekly Manjaro. Manjaro helps your body regulate blood sugar. And Manjaro can help decrease how much food you eat. Three out of four people reached an A1C of less than 7%. Plus, people taking Manjaro lost up to 25 pounds. Manjaro is not for people with type 1 diabetes or children. Don't take Manjaro if you're allergic to it. You or your family have medullary thyroid cancer or multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2. Stop Manjaro and call your doctor right away if you have an allergic reaction, a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, vision changes, or diabetic retinopathy. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis and gallbladder problems. Taking Manjaro with sulfonylurea or insulin raises low blood sugar risk. Tell your doctor if you're nursing, pregnant, or plan to be. Side effects include nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, which can cause dehydration and may worsen kidney problems. I can do diabetes differently with Manjaro. Ask your doctor about once weekly Manjaro. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, 